So the project I'm going to show you today is um, something I'm going to do here on my house. So I'm standing in front of my house. So right behind me is the front door to my house, Casa de Willis. And recently I decided I want to hang a flag out in front of my house. American flag. I think it's patriotic. I used to have one at my old house. I have no idea why I hadn't mounted one at this house yet, but I haven't. So I got myself a flag and a flagpole and a mount that puts it at an angle. And I was looking around for a good place to mount it. So we settled on mounting it on this aluminum column you see right behind me. So uh, that poses some challenges because that's actually a, a thin wall aluminum box is what that is. But let's take a look at it. Okay, so I'm just going to show you real quick um, how those aluminum columns are made. So um, uh, if you look up aluminum columns here and look at images, um, just so you know what's going on on the inside. So like... Pretty much this is this is our column right here, right? Looks just like it, and um, and then here's a good picture of what's going on inside the column. So this is like I was telling you, it's actually a, a thin wall thing. It's kind of clipped together from multiple pieces. This just give you an idea. All right, so here's the base of the column, um, and it's measuring to be about nine and a half inches square. So it's probably a nominal ten inch column. Um, and I'll just point out that it's got these uh, these flutes in it. It's actually a seam right there. These things are snapped together from multiple pieces. Um, so we're going to have to deal with that. And then the other thing is it's uh, it's hollow. So that presents a challenge, especially on a flag, because on a flag uh, you get a lot of forces and a lot of pulling and the winds blowing, etc. Okay, so if I took this thing and I centered it. It would actually look something like uh, this. Uh, that's centered left to right exactly, which is where you would think you'd want to do it. That actually brings the screw holes into those radius fluted areas, which is just kind of not good. Um, so I'll, what I'll do uh, to get it to come in on the flat areas, I'll move it over just a little bit like that so that our screw holes will go into the flats um, in between the radius flutes on this column. It'll be slightly off to one side, but I don't think it'll be a big deal. Getting the fastener attached well into that aluminum that would withstand all the forces from a wind blowing on the flag and everything. Um, even though that, that aluminum column is, is relatively thin wall, so you, it's a challenge because you can't just put a regular thread forming screw in there. Uh, it, it wouldn't get enough teeth to bite in. And it wouldn't have enough strength. So um, what I decided to go with is uh, a rivet nut and uh, a rivet nut is something I've used in my uh, design career and I'll show you what one looks like um, it looks kind of like this um, that's a rivet nut so another reason why I went with this is because you can get these uh, in stainless steel uh, and I want everything out there to be stainless steel so it's got like a, a flange on the front uh, it's got the thread that you want on the inside which I'm going with a quarter inch um, uh, machine screw threads, so quarter twenty. Um, and the other good thing about a rivet nut is it can work with a blind hole, which blind hole means that you can't get to the back side. You just have to drill a hole and put something in there. Um, so how you put this in is using a special tool, and that tool looks like this. Now, uh, when I've designed um, rivet nuts, or they're also referred to as nut certs. You may have heard of a nut cert or a rivet nut or a rivet nut. They're all the same thing. Uh, when I designed with them for use in uh, factories uh, while I was a design engineer, uh, they actually had pneumatic powered tools where you just like zipped it on and then you hit a trigger and it, it popped it right in immediately. This is a hand powered tool um, because uh, I'm too cheap to go buy a pneumatic tool because I don't use this kind of stuff very often. Uh, rivet nuts are used a lot in automotive. Uh, I used them some when I was designing appliances and um, I think it'll work good for this. So we'll we'll put it in. It'll be stainless steel crimped into the aluminum column, and then I'll use a stainless steel bolt. Um, so we'll all be corrosion protected. Uh, the mount stainless steel also. So it'll all be corrosion protected, and uh, should be pretty strong. So uh, I'm just going to demonstrate how the rivet nut works, so that you can understand it. Um, because when I go to uh, crimp it into the column out there, you won't. You won't be able to see what's going on on the back side. So let me show you that. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to just um, use a piece of uh, scrap sheet metal. I'll clamp it here in my vise. So you can see here that uh, that rivet nut, the uh, small diameter there, 
you know, not including the, uh, the flange on the front of it. The small diameter is about uh, 350 thousandths or 0 .350 inches. So that's the size hole that we're going to want uh, in their panel. You want that hole to be really as tight as possible. So um, I'm going to use this just to get me a hole started. Um, this is a uh, step drill bit, which is really good for uh, sheet metal. This is just to get our hole started. So here's a drill bit uh, I got out of my drill index that's measuring it at about 340. Let's give it a try. You don't want to go just by measurement. Let's actually drill it and let's let's see how it fits. Yeah, that's still too small. Uh, I'm going to go up one size of my drill index, which is a 2364. So this one is measuring about 356, so slightly bigger, but that's the next size drill I've got in my drill index. Um, we'll give that one a try next. And we'll try our nut now. And it slips right in. Okay. So there's a little bit of play side to side, not much, um, but with the drill index I've got, uh, that's going to be as close as I've got. I've got a fractional drill index. All right, so here's the tool I showed you. So you take the, um, the actual rivet nut and you just um, you want to thread it onto the end. And the way this thing works is uh, with the arms out like that, the stud is stuck out. And then when you pull the arms in, it pulls the stud in. So that's how that works. That's what the arm's in. So what you want is you want to have the arms pulled out like that. So the stud is as far out as it'll go. And then you want to tighten this thing all the way in. Just finger tight like that. And then we'll insert into the hole. And then you just pull the handles together to uh, crimp it into place. All right. Now... This particular tool's got a thumb wheel back here because now you have to unscrew the tool from the rivet nut, which is locked into the panel now.
Okay, what I bought um, to mount these is some uh, button head uh, Allen hex uh, screws. Just because they're, uh, I got these in stainless steel and they have a nice finished look on the outside of them. So I got these. And the other thing about nut certs is you don't want to put a lot of torque on these things. So I'm not going to tighten these down really, really tight. So because of that, we're going to use some of this. This is Loctite uh, Thread Locker. Actually, it's not Loctite, it's Permatex brand, but it's Thread Locker, which you put a little bit of this on the threads, and then that will actually keep it from unscrewing from vibration and stuff like that. So, don't want to put too much torque, so you usually want to use Thread Locker. You can see here, you just want to put it around the threads just in the area where it's going to engage with the nut. Again, you want to snug these down, but don't put a lot of torque on them. Let the thread locker do the locking. We're good to go. Okay, so there she is all hung up, old Glory. Um, thanks for watching my video. Uh, this was a little tricky because you had to use some special tools and some uh, special uh, nut certs. Um, but thanks for watching my video, and uh, uh, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, watch my other videos too. Thanks. Bye.